Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Canadian Bible ban, <sighs> stabbing spree, Russian rejection, and surviving Diddy. <laughs> Welcome, all my little Sig Tigs, all my new subscribers, welcome. And uh, we're going to hit that hotness today, check it out. Canada coming out with that wildness. Canadian measures would remove free speech protections for quoting Bible and sacred texts. So not only a Bible ban, but a ban on all sacred texts potentially. Legislation introduced into Canada's Parliament would eliminate the use of belief in a religious text as a defense against a hate crime. So there is a statute in there now that like, uh, it's an exemption basically for uh, religious speech and text. Repealing the exemption in Canada's criminal code would criminalize sermons and messages using the Bible or other religious texts as the basis for critiquing other religions or addressing issues such as transgender rights, critics warn. Yves Francois Blanchet, leader of the minority Bloc Quebecois party, submitted the private member's bill defined as a measure not sponsored by a cabinet minister or parliamentary secretary in November and again last month. The measure received an initial reading in the lower chamber but no action has followed. Mr. Blanchet said when he introduced the bill that its purpose is to allow authorities to prosecute anti-Semitic speech, the measure is needed to refrain from giving inappropriate and undue privileges to people within a society who use them to disturb the peace and harmony, especially if those privileges enable people to sow hatred or wish death upon others based on a belief in some divine power, he told Parliament. Two-thirds Canadians surveyed February 16th to 18th by polling firm Leger uh, said they support the measure. But Jeff King, president of the Washington-based International Christian Concern, said Thursday the proposal is designed to silence people whose opinions differ from the prevailing thought. We cannot urge direct violence against somebody, he said, but free speech means we have, we all have very different opinions in democracy and we're supposed to have vigorous debates. He said the legislation could open the door to prosecuting anybody expressing sincere beliefs based on their religious sacred text. Under the proposal, he said, you can't say the Bible says so-and-so, or you could be arrested to be charged. You can be fined. Despite labels, Mr. King said, this measure has nothing to do with combating anti-Semitism. Mr. Blanchett did not respond to a request for comment made through his spokesperson. Freedom of religious expression has been under attack in recent years. In Britain, several people have faced repeated criminal charges with no convictions for standing outside abortion clinics after business hours and silently praying. Can you believe it? Literally, just standing there, praying. The police officers came up and said, excuse me, what are you doing? We have a complaint from the establishment across the road that you're here. Uh, are you praying? And the person says yes, and they're like, okay, come with us. You're not allowed to pray in public. Silently. In Finland, a prosecutor is appealing the second acquittal of parliamentary member Paiva Rasanan and Lutheran bishop who were accused of hate speech for stating biblical beliefs on homosexuality. And literally all they did was quote Romans, uh, basically stating that... Um, Homosexuality is a sin. It's immoral behavior. It goes against creation. And the Bible is all about creation, procreation, you know, go forth and multiply. Well, the alternative lifestyle to creation is LGBTQ plus IA, which I now call alts. In August 2022, a regional court in Germany said 40 days for life, a pro-life group that held silent prayer vigils near an abortion counseling center in Forsheim, could not be barred from holding such demonstrations. Of course not. The ruling overturned a city ban on such demonstrations that the Pro Familia Abortion Counseling Center had requested. So they were like, hey, listen, uh, can you put a ban on silent prayer because people who are coming to murder their children uh, uh, in utero are uncomfortable with that. So anyway, way to go, Canada. They also have another bill uh, just totally uh, trying to shut down internet free speech as well. So it goes just alongside with this. Censorship is all over the gaff. And we'll move on from that. We'll keep you posted. What to know about the deadly Rockford, Illinois stabbing spree? A 22-year-old suspect was arrested in the incident that left four people dead. So what is going on? Police investigated a deadly Rockford, Illinois stabbing spree. Questions remain after authorities say a man went on a violent rampage in a residential neighborhood in northern Illinois Wednesday afternoon, killing four people and wounding seven. So he was 22. So what's a 22-year-old going around murdering people with a knife? 
Uh, okay, so let's go. Following his arrest in a frenzied attack, the suspect Christian Sato waived his Miranda rights to remain silent and told investigators he was high on marijuana. He claimed it was given to him by one of the slaying victims that he believed was laced with a strong narcotic. Winnebago County State's Attorney Jay Hanlon at a news conference Thursday. So we covered a story like this before. It was in California, I believe. A woman and her uh, friend and a dog sat around smoking some highly potent, that was what was on the label, like for, uh, not for beginners, basically, it's like for uh, avid users, like, you know, this stuff is the chronic. And guess what? Uh, she went ahead and murdered the gentleman and stabbed her dog and attempted to stab herself, all using three different knives from smoking marijuana. So maybe this guy knows exactly uh, that story and he's using it as a defense right away. Um, who knows? Maybe there is some crazy marijuana out there that's jacking up people's brains and making them want to murder people. Reefer Madness, perhaps. Maybe the movie was correct. Check it out. It's from like 1920 or something like that. But Hanley said Sato was conscious throughout the entire rampage and recalled details of each attack in his interview with investigators. I don't have a real answer for that, and I'm not sure we will. Sato faces four counts of murder and seven counts of attempted murder, as well as two counts of home invasion with a dangerous weapon. Sato is scheduled to be arraigned Thursday afternoon. Holding back tears, an emotional Rockford mayor, Tom McKinnon, identified those killed in the attacks 15-year-old Jenna Newcomb, 49-year-old Jay Larson, and 63-year-old Romana Schubach, and her 23-year-old son, Jacob Schubach. And uh, we all pray for your souls and rest in peace. And we'll pray for the, uh, the young gentleman as well who is a uh, murderer. Stay off the marijuana, people. Russian Federation rejects U.S. extended continental shelf. So what is that? What are they talking about? What is the continental shelf? Well, up in the north, uh, yeah, this would be the North Pole. Great. What is this? Uh, this is the Bering Sea. We have the United States basically uh, owning Alaska. They bought it from Russia. They, they regret that move. And uh, yeah, so Canada lays claim to a bunch of the Arctic up here. And the U.S. is saying, oh, well, we own all this up here. This is what we want. This is ours. And Russia was like, ah, nah, I don't think so. State-owned media, the Russian Foreign Ministry delivered a demarche to the United States and protested to the Council of the International Seabed Authority, which is currently being hosted in Kingston, Jamaica, over the U.S. announcement of its extended continental shelf claim. This represents the first true legal battle of Arctic demarcations after the United States and the Russian Federation launched their 21st century Arctic strategies. The announcement reads below. And why do they care so much? Well, the ice is melting, and what's underneath the ice is land, and what's underneath the land is oil. So guess what? They probably know that there's a ton of that black stuff in this area, and they want it. Under the current United Nations adopted the Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, uh, which the United States is not a party to, every coastal nation has 3 to 12 nautical mile territorial waters and 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone designation however language in the charter established the possibility for nations to appeal for an extended continental shelf depending on the bithymetry and geological data and ecs gives the claimant exclusive access to the natural resources there it is oil contained on the ocean floor not the water above it and ecs is defined as sedimentary deposits and bedrock that exist near the continental shelf the coastal region so down in jamaica right now they're going to decide whether the u.s gets a piece of all that oil that's underneath the water. Um, so Canada, you know, step up. Russia is obviously saying no dice. Putin on attacking NATO. So uh, people have come out and said, yeah, especially America and the UK, they said, Putin is going to attack a NATO country, okay? If we don't stop him from uh, advancing into the Ukraine, if we don't stop the war, then he is going to attack one of our NATO allies. And he's just like, Pfft. I'm not. So Politico just says, just trust him. And here he is laughing. So, okay, uh, Russia has no plans to invade the rest of Europe, President Vladimir Putin said late Wednesday, despite numerous warnings to NATO by Russian officials and Putin's own musings about nuclear war. As the Kremlin's all-out conflict in Ukraine enters its third year, unbelievable, Putin vigorously rejected speculation that Russia could attack other countries in Eastern Europe next. Yeah, he is not going to be the attacker, okay? He's going to defend his area, which is kind of what he's been doing. They overtook Crimea in 2014, annexed it. They're not happy about that. NATO keeps encroaching. Again, uh, this is complete nonsense. The possibility of an attack on some other countries, on Poland, the Baltic states, the Czechs are scared. It's just nonsense, he said, adding that Russia has no aggressive attentions towards these states. And there you have it. Russia announces substantiated evidence of Ukraine linked to the Krakus Hall terrorists. We covered this the other day. Uh, basically, a couple of people went into a 
the Crocus Hall and started just murdering people with AK-47s. Uh, they killed 140 people, injured uh, many more. So what's the deal? They captured them, tortured them, took them to court, and everyone's like, oh, well, they tortured them. It's not legit. Well, guess what? What would you do if someone came into your country uh, illegally and started murdering people? Hundreds of people. Well, if they won't talk, guess what? I would imagine they're going to Guantanamo Bay and they're going to get tortured. Russian authorities say they have found a firm link between the suspects and last week's terror attack on the Krakus Hall city complex and Ukrainian nationalists. The Russian investigative committee has unveiled preliminary findings stating that the perpetrators who last Friday killed 140 people and wounded many more had received significant sums of money from Ukraine. Investigators claim to have in their possession substantiated evidence that the attackers received payments from Ukraine in the form of cryptocurrency. There you have it. It's usually money, cash, but guess what? Cryptocurrency, you don't have to carry it around with you. But if it's on the blockchain, you can discover it because cryptocurrency isn't anonymous. It is not. You can find out. You can find it. Cash is anonymous unless you can find a fingerprint on it. And then what? That doesn't really prove anything. President Putin had started Saturday asserted uh, as de- had starting Saturday asserted I don't know what that is on about. The terrorists were apprehended just before trying to cross the Ukrainian border. He alleged that the Ukrainians might have been preparing a window for them to cross. There were four gunmen who rampaged through the mall and concert venue on Friday, randomly shooting innocent bystanders, but in total, 11 were initially arrested, followed by several more arrests of alleged conspirators. Days following Putin's speech, the head of Russia's Federal Security Service, Alexander Bornikov, told press briefing that the Kremlin considers that the U.S., U.K., and Ukraine may have all been involved. Of course, the speed with which they were able to come to such forthright conclusions is astonishing. It took them only a few hours to get to a microphone, turn on the lights, summon the press, and draw a conclusion about who is to blame for the horribly bloody terrorist attack. Yeah, well, uh, time is not necessarily a factor if they have the evidence. No evidence was presented publicly, though. So we'll go ahead and keep you posted on that, because it is heating up over there. More than 1,600 planes are hit by mysterious GPS jamming across Europe, with Russia feared to be responsible. Okay, so things are really heating up over there. So if you're flying around, this is Easter weekend. It's Good Friday. This is the day the good Lord was hung up on the cross, and uh, his life was snatched away by a bunch of uh, uh, Romans and, uh, I guess, uh, the Pharisees. Anyway, uh, so uh, Jesus then uh, died on the cross, and uh, good... Good Friday is what we call it, you know, and then we have Easter Sunday. So anyone who's traveling on this weekend, you know, be careful up there because uh, potential GPS malfunctions are happening. Uh, More than 1,600 planes have been hit by a mysterious interference that many fear Russia is behind. Planes flying over and around the Baltic Sea in Northern Europe have been suffering technical problems caused by jamming since Sunday, with 1,614 planes, mostly civilian, reporting problems since then. While most of them appear to be taking place in Polish airspace, OSINT blogs have reported that planes flying in German, Danish, Swedish, Latvian, and Lithuanian airspace have suffered interference problems as well. Notably, little to no interference appears to be taking place in Belarus, a staunch Russian ally, or uh, Kaliningrad, the Russian province separated from the mainland by the sea and land. Very interesting uh, area there, Kaliningrad. Uh, The planes appear to be suffering from GPS jamming, which can confuse pilots as this can make them believe they are in a different location than they actually are. And it was 63 hours and 40 minutes this afternoon. Uh, From 24 hours with full regular power, Sweden, Germany, Poland, and after that, almost 40 hours reduced to what can be described as covering Polish airspace only. So all of these airplanes up here are getting jacked up by some sort of uh, radar jamming. And of course, they believe it is Russia. Well, who else could it be? The Chinese, the North Koreans, maybe it's the Americans, maybe it's a black flag. Who knows? Anyway, uh, we'll keep you posted on this one as well. Uh, If any planes do go down due to this, uh, but be careful that they're flying, especially if it's on a Boeing 737 MAX. They just fired their uh, CEO and a bunch of people in that company, and they took on a massive DEI, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, stance and policy, and their uh, safety policy uh, took a back door, and doors are flying off. Wheels are falling off. The IRS has 940,000 unclaimed tax refunds from 2020 that are about to expire. Hey, Listen, if you filed your taxes and you wonder, like, hey, maybe I didn't get any money or whatever, maybe your parents died uh, during tax season 2020 or an aunt or uncle, friend, whatever, get in touch with them and say, hey, did you get your money? Because there's a billion dollars in the government's coffers and they were just going to absorb that. That's your money. So go ahead and contact your IRS agents. Give them a call at the 1-800 number and say, guess what? 
Do you have any money there for me? The average medium refund is $932. So there you go. You could be in for a G note. Survey says Gen Z workforce is toxic, least, least reliable, and that's just the start. Well, uh, Gen Zs get a bad rap in the workplace, or do they? Many employers have concluded that Gen Z workforce is toxic and the least reliable among all generations. And those are a couple of the nicer things employers had to say in the new Freedom Economy Index report conducted by Public Square and Red Balloon. In the survey, 68% of small business owners said Gen Zers were the least reliable among all employees, adding to this that they responded that 71% of these workers were most likely to have a workplace mental health concern. Yeah, why? Because they probably believe in a bunch of crazy stuff that doesn't make sense to normal humans. If this doesn't hit hard enough, take a look at the following. Less than 4% of employees surveyed said that Gen Z was the generation that most aligns with their culture. 62% said that this generation was most likely to create toxicity and division at work. And uh, probably call in sick and ask for the weekend off on their first week at work. Uh, those are some seriously alarming numbers that can have consequences, such as employers shying away from hiring Gen Z, shying away, but completely avoiding them. Is this accurate? From surveys like this, that they target employers who may be jaded for one reason or another. Maybe they have had a bad experience with Gen Zer and assume that all the members of this generation are toxic, or perhaps there's an issue with the company itself, such as older employees disrespecting Gen Zers. <laughs> yeah, here's the truth. If you've met any of these Gen Zers with their blue hair and uh, the millennials, whatever, whatever generation it is, right? It's not the Gen Xers. But these Gen Zers, yeah, like they're going around, like they don't want to work, they want to stay at home, you know, work's too hard, working eight hours a day, I don't get enough money, I want to be on my phone, I want to be on TikTok, I want to be an influencer, I want to get paid for uh, creating content. And that's great, that's what the Tiger's trying to do, nothing wrong with it, but I do have a regular job, and I do investing and stuff like that, and that's how I stay afloat. I don't leave my house, unless I have to go grocery shopping, or to a social event. I stay home and raise my family. Uh, yeah, so anyway, there you go, Gen Zers. Good luck getting a job in the future. So uh, we've been covering the migrants uh, for quite a while here now, uh, 10,000 a day, uh, up to seven to 10,000. So here's another migrant caravan just coming, 3,000 strong, so look out. A Couple of Christians coming there with the cross. I don't see any women. Oh, there's one there. There's two, three. There's a child. Peace out, Adidas. And, but, yeah, there's another one. There's a few women there. But it's definitely uh, a majority of men. Unbelievable. And what's going on? Well, these people have heard that New York City is giving away $1,800 a month for free. And you get free food, and they'll put you up in a luxurious hotel. And guess what? Oh, my God. Like, who wouldn't want that? Like, even the Tigers considered getting a plane ticket and just burning all my documents once I arrive uh, in Mexico and, you know, jumping in on the migrants, just rub a bit of dirt on my white face. Maybe I can get a darker complexion, maybe being out in the sun all day long, I'll get a bit of a tan and uh, I'm not having no sangles, senor. And then boom, guess what? I'm in. I'm seeking asylum because I don't even know who I am. I don't know where I came from. I don't even speak English. So there you go. Look out. There's 3,000 more coming strong. Nine migrants who stormed El Paso border assaulted National Guard troops and wild caught on camera scene charged with assault and inciting a riot. Very good. So uh, they went ahead and arrested these uh, these uh, delinquents. Texas authorities have charged nine migrants for involvement in the assault and National Guard troops and storming of the border in El Paso, Texas. Late Thursday, state government sources told the Post the charges the migrants faced inciting a riot, damage to property over 2,500, and assault on members of the Guard, the source said. So it's good to see them actually doing something instead of just taking those people and putting them across the border and say, hey, no big deal, just go up to New York and get that debit card. We cover this. Uh, Lionel Moreno, migrant influencer, encouraging others to invade U.S. and squat at homes. Go get that return. Uh, yeah, there's a video that we covered. And he was like, you know, get yours. Let's go and get some of these houses. Well, uh, he was removed from TikTok for uh, promoting illegal activities. And then he cried and sobbed and had a big snot hanging of his nose with a baby. Uh, you know, probably for sympathy. And... Uh, yeah, so what's the deal with this guy? He was enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program, which allows federal authorities to track migrants using ankle monitors or other technology. However, he didn't follow the rules, and he's now listed as an absconder from the program, according to the Internal Immigration and Customs Enforcement. So get a good look at this guy. He's a creep, and uh, he had blue hair and red hair in his videos, so he's obviously trying to disguise himself somehow, maybe as a clown. Um, maybe he's a Gen Zer. So anyway, uh, watch out for this guy, okay? And people like him who are going to come and squat in your house, okay? 
An illegal immigrant has been arrested for the rape of mentally incapacitated girl in Alabama. So here we go. There's more. It never ends, okay? These people are just going crazy. Let's hear what they have to say about this. This morning, an illegal immigrant man is behind bars accused of raping a mentally incapacitated teen. Enterprise police arrested Pablo Mendoza after getting word of the crime happening last month. Sheriff Scott Scumbag. Young scum. In the United States illegally. Authorities say that Mendoza had sex with a teen and the teen could not consent due to her being, quote, physically helpless or mentally incapacitated. In a wheelchair. She's charged with rape in the first degree and is currently being held in the Coffee County Jail without bond. Thank God that he's in jail without bond. Don't let him out. And, of course, we're going to cover uh, women's sports because uh, it's being destroyed. And here we have another story. Women's soccer team featuring five trans players that destroyed opposition 10 to nothing on way to winning grand final with one biological male scoring six goals in one game a superstar he's obviously the mvp of the tournament uh a row erupted after a women's football team consisting of five transgender players won the preseason barrel Ackroyd cup tournament in sydney australia flying bats fc won every game they played over the course of the four-week competition winning the grand final four nothing at macquarie park on sunday to take home the thousand dollar jackpot congratulations you can divvy that up. There were huge winning margins in some games, with one trans player scoring six goals in a 10-0 victory. Furious parents have withdrawn their daughters from games due to safety concerns, telling News Corps that the players were unaware that they had signed up to compete against biological males. Club officials have also contacted Football NSW uh, to express their concerns, with some insisting that the Flying Bats should play in the mixed competition, which includes men. Yeah, they should, 100%. Look at these beasts. Look at the size of them. Unbelievable. Get out of here, guys. Like, are you that terrible at men's sports that you have to go dominate women's sports? Our girls are here to play for fun and expect to play in the female competition. They didn't sign up for a mixed competition. Yeah, it's a fact. There's no transparency from football and ass. The girls don't know if they're going to be playing biological males or not. Yeah, so it's a problem. Uh, the biggest LGBTQIA plus women's and non-married football club in the world. There you go. So they're major promoters of it. So they should have known. They could have found it out. And there, there's their logo. Like, it's not hard to figure out that they are uh, flying the rainbow. These guidelines, along with the Sex Discrimination Act, inform the gender inclusion policies of Football Australia, Football NSW, and the North West Sydney Football Association, the community grassroots levels at which we play. Trans women belong in the women's competition because that is the gender with which they identify. Trans women have played with the club for at least 20 years at levels ranging from beginner to skilled, just like our cis women players. Whatever. Okay, so here's the deal. You know, we can see that there is a disparity between physical strength, regardless of if you're on estrogen or uh, uh, testosterone blockers or whatever it is you're on. The truth is, is that men are born and built differently than women, uh, chromosomally, and that causes uh, the DNA to build the structure. And guess what? No matter what you do, after a certain period, you can't reverse that, just like with puberty blockers. You can't reverse it once you start taking it. So anyway, uh, yeah, sad to see. Hopefully they sort that out. Uh, here we have Jesse Waters from Fox News. For decades, Diddy was the Democrats' biggest black celebrity influencer. Democrats used Diddy's charisma, star power, and street cred in black community every single election. He was a political enforcer and in the back pocket of the powerful that made him powerful uh, with a free pass. Now if Diddy's found guilty, he's a combination of Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. So how prevalent is sexual blackmail in American industry and democratic politics? It's more than you think, and the powerful not only tolerate it, they participate in it. Yeah, so a lot of people believe that the raids that were happening on uh, Diddy's homes uh, were not to collect evidence, but to destroy evidence. Because if you're aware, Epstein is dead, probably. He's committed suicide. And uh, yeah, so what's going to happen to Diddy? Nothing. Nothing at all. Guaranteed. Or maybe something. But no information will be revealed. We'll have no idea about anything. Just like Epstein. No one knows anything, but they do. The FBI has the list. They know everyone who was on that island. They have the tapes of people sexually abusing people and all that noise. Well, guess what? Surviving Diddy. How do you do it? The stories of victims who brought criminal charges against Puff Daddy and lived to tell the tale. Apparently 50 Cent, uh, Curtis Jackson, the rapper from New York, is going to go ahead and put this in a documentary. Puff Daddy, also known as Sean Combs, is one of the most successful and influential figures in the music industry. However, his success has been marred by allegations of criminal activity, including assault, battery, and even murder. Over the years, several victims have come forward to accuse Combs of wrongdoing, 
and some have been brought criminal charges against them. I mean, this article will take a look at some of the most high-profile cases. All right, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, most disturbing allegation against Combs involved the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. Combs has been accused of orchestrating the murder, which took place in 1996. While Combs has never been charged with the crime, the allegations have persisted for years. In a recent interview with the ABC News, Shakur's former bodyguard, Frank Alexander, said that he believes Combs was involved in the murder. Another victim who accused Combs of wrongdoing is Jennifer Lopez. In her book, True Love, Lopez describes an incident in which Combs allegedly assaulted her. When Lopez, Combs became angry during an argument and punched her in the face. Lopez says that she was left with a bruised eye and a split lip. Combs has denied the allegations. One of the most well-known cases involving Combs is 1999 shooting at the club in New York. Combs was arrested and charged with weapons violations and bribery, but later acquitted on all charges. However, the incident left a lasting impact on the victims and their families. Three people were injured in the shooting, and one of them, Natina Natanya Rubin was left paralyzed. In an interview with ABC News, Rubin said that she still suffers from the effects of the shooting and has changed her life. So yeah, there are some shootings there that he was involved in. And of course, they don't mention any of the sexual assaults. We covered this in uh, one of our previous articles. Uh, him and his security guard went into a bathroom and were you know, engaging in sexual intercourse with a woman. And then uh, Diddy swapped out with his security guard, who was then very rough with the woman, and uh, raped her, as she described it. And there's other allegations of uh, homosexual uh, rape against uh, different celebrities. Uh, Justin Bieber's name has con come up. Um, Usher, as well. You know, who else? Nobody knows. But uh, guess what? We're never going to find out, because no one ever is going to mess with Puff Daddy. Because he is the mogul that everyone loves. The Democrats and all that. So we'll see. We'll see where this really goes. Uh, I see like a number of things happening potentially. But uh, unlikely any information will surface. People have been named within the case and stuff like that. But it is. Like P. Diddy. P. Didn't. P. Did it. Sigma Tiger. Signing off.